Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast, and one of us is actually driving. Uh, joining me today is uh, Pastor Hall from Zion Lutheran Church, Tomball, Texas. Pastor, how you doing? I am fantastic, Brother Goodman. If I was any better, I'd be you. Oh, aim way higher, my friend. Aim way, oh, no, way I, higher. I have, I've swung for the fences and nailed it, so I tell you. All right. Well, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll covet your beard. You covet other things. It'll be all right. We'll, we'll work it out in the middle. <laughs> oh, I like the, the, the app with the, the foam better. It's like my beard has disappeared into the steering wheel here. No one knows There's, where it ends. I saw, I just assumed it was like that jet ski thing where it clips to the wheel. So if you ever like fall off, it would shut the car off somehow. It, it's actually, actually drives for me whenever I, I'm hands-free, you know, it just dr- does the driving for me. It's fantastic. It's a better driver than I am. I am I deeply you. uncomfortable right now. Let's do Luther. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Pastor, you said you wanted to talk about uh, the diet of worms. Uh, you have to say worms if you're really going to show off. It, uh, so it's, it's spelled worms, but they don't do that in German, right? Yeah, I guess they, I don't know. I mean, I went to Germany one time. I was 18 years old. I remember a little bit of it. You know, I'm not saying anything like, oh, what did he do there? Who knows? You'll never know. It's a mystery. But no, I mean, I went to, I never went to Varms or Worms or however you say it. And, uh, but you know, it was a fun time anyways. So, but um, a lot of, a lot of stuff led up to that. A lot of stuff happened at it. A lot of stuff came after that. And it's a, a neat, I would say probably some of the most popular history in Luther. Um, you so know, we're talking Luther, Luther today then, right? Yeah, we're talking Luther today. Last time, you know, we're in the 300. Now we're in 1500. So Yet again, like I said last time, history is about Christ's relationship to us, our relationship to Christ. You get that hymn, you know, uh, death speeds my life's endeavor to be with Christ forever. So your whole life is about being with Christ. So that's the entire narrative of the church, the narrative of the world. Is right. So it lets us hop with around with our ADHD. And so uh, we're going all the way to Luther. We are Lutheran. And so this is sort of our wheelhouse, but uh, it, it's, it's still really, really important because of not Luther, but but Jesus. So tell me about how Luther enters into to Worms. Tell me a story. Well, it's, it's great, right? You have Luther. He's this um, German. Everyone says monk, but he's probably a friar, not a monk. But he's a professor at this place called Wittenberg. Wittenberg, Wittenberg. He teaches theology there. And at this time, Rome is trying to build St. Peter's Basilica. Now, this you can go there still today. It's, I've never been there. I don't know. Have you been there? You've been there? No. Oh, man. I, I want to go see the Sistine Chapel, see the, all this stuff, but it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. But you got to pay for that. You got to pay money for it. So Rome starts handing out these things called indulgences, these pieces of paper that if you buy one, it, it kind of how Rome justified is they said, this is for the simpleton, the simple person. They can get this indulgence and they say, hey, the church is praying for me. I have a ticket to heaven because of this piece of paper. So Luther you know, wants to debate this. And that's when we celebrate being Lutheran is October 31st, 1517. He nails the 95 theses on the doors at, in the Wittenberg church. Things don't really pick up there. And what happens is Luther nails them there. There's some discussion. There's a little dialogue, but things keep brewing. Luther keeps writing. He has these disputations, one in Heidelberg, one in Leipzig, he keeps talking to people. He's talking about justification by faith alone. He's talking about scripture alone. He's talking about how man has no free will to choose Christ. It's all by grace alone. So he's doing all this stuff. But then he writes three treatises in 1520 that really get him into some big trouble. And the three treatises or like writings, papers, we would say, are the freedom of a Christian, a letter to the German nobility, and then the Babylonian captivity of the church. Freedom of a Christian is basically Luther's paper on what does the Christian life look like. You know, a Christian is the freest Lord of all, subject to none, and yet a Christian is a dutiful, most dutiful servant of all, subject to all. And then you have Babylonian captivity of the church, which was his writing against the sacramental system of Rome. And then his letter to the German nobility was, hey guys, you could do this. We don't need Rome to do it. Y'all could do it for us. So he keeps being told to shut up, to shut up, Mark. and he won't shut up. He keeps going and going and going. Finally gets excommunicated. You know, the Pope sends this excommunication. What does Luther do? He goes out back with his buddies and burns it. You know, that's what he did. They burn them all. It's a fun time. They have a little bonfire, him and Melanchthon, uh, Karl Stott. They're having a fun time. 
But then this guy named Charles V, Charles V, he's the emperor, Holy Roman Emperor, he's the king of Spain, Duke of the Netherlands. Eventually, he's going to take over a lot of Italy. The only people who really stand up to him, actually, France is scared of him. England is scared of him. The Turk is the only threat to this guy. This dude is like the most powerful man in the world. He wants to bring Luther up on charges, you know. So he brings him to this place called Worms, Farms. And there, Luther is basically told, you have to recant. You have to say, I apologize for everything I've written. None of it's true. I'm a faithful son of Rome. So this is 1521. Luther comes to Worms, and he is like hailed as the champion of the German people. And this is where it kind of relates a little bit to a little bit what you and Patty Boy talked about the other day with old Will, you know, Will mm -hmm. and Chris and all their fun times. It's kind of how do we stand up for the truth? What? How does a Christian man stand up for the truth? Because look at what Luther's facing here is – if you don't say sorry, you're dead, man. You're going to be an outlaw. So if anyone finds you, they can kill you. Just kill you. So first day he's on trial, Luther can't even speak. He stutters. It's, it's rare for him because this is the, the guy who always like draws a crowd with speaking and nothing. He says, give me a day. Give me a day. They give him a day. He comes back the next day. And he says, I, some of this stuff I can say sorry for because I went a little too far, you know. I drew a picture of Car Cardinal Cayetan as a butt playing a harp. You know, that's not right. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't no, have drawn pictures of people taking poops and Pope Leo's hat. That was wrong, too. So it's not like no, Luther's always there, you know. I shouldn't do that stuff. I won't do that again. But the stuff about Scripture I can't say sorry about because it's, it's plain Scripture and reason I can't. And then he fa says these famous things. He says, I will not and I cannot recant. Here I stand. I could do no other. God help me. And he says, that because I stand on scripture, I can't do this. So what's interesting after this is instead of doing like a popularity tour, you know, going on Twitter, going on, on um, Instagram, posting, hey, I beat Charles V today, even though he was outlawed. He's actually kidnapped, fake kidnapped by Frederick the Wise, and taken to a place called the Wartburg. A lot of W's today. Worms, Wittenberg, Wartburg, all these W's. Germans Why? and the W's. Church they were history. so yeah. mad at the Latins Hard for taking me. W out, they brought it back in with the German language. Oh. But the, the, it's a Wartburg castle. And it's there that Luther did the most phenomenal thing at the Wartburg. Instead of like collecting fan mail, who was opposed, who liked what he did, he sat there and he translated the entire New Testament in 11 weeks. Gave us the New Testament in German, which would really just influence how we see the scriptures, how we understand the scriptures. It's phenomenal stuff. So I guess why I say this story, this narrative is how do we as Christian men and women, not just Lutheran, but Christian, because here's the thing with Luther. He's not just for Lutherans. I mean, he didn't translate the Bible just so little Lutheran people can can read it remember what lutherans were called and even still in some parts of germany are called today is evangelisch katholisch gath ugh, not catholic gospel centered catholics they're catholics that care about the gospel that are about the gospel and that's what we're about so when luther is pushed back against the wall when his nerves are frayed when when you've gone after his girl what does he do? He stands on scripture and says, hey, I'm claimed by Christ. So is my wife. So are my children. So are my friends. And guess what, buddy? So are you. We're all claimed by Christ. And that's what we stand on. That's where we stand. So we can't do any of it. And when we learn those lessons from history, that can drive how we act when someone pushes up us, us up against the wall and does that. So it's fun stuff. I love it. So it, how, um, how, did, how did this story end? How did Luther's story end or Worms? Worms. Worms, you know, ends with, like, Luther does this, and Charles V outlaws him, right? So he's outlawed, and that means anyone can kill this guy. So Luther now is excommunicate, excommunicated from the church, outlawed by the emperor. But here's the thing, the Lutheran faith doesn't go away. The gospel doesn't go away. In fact, it strengthens, it grows, but this also happened to Luther, and we'll talk about this another time. It also started spreading a bunch of other problems, too. 
because this was the big issue with Luther is he's not a, a champion of a certain people. He's not like the German reformer. He's not a reformer in that way. He is a reformer of the faith. He's the champion of the faith. So that's really what won the day in Worms was the gospel with Luther. So that's how kind of Worms ended, at least for him. When he left, like I said, he got kidnapped and they, the rest is history from there. I think that's really important, though, because it, it sort of flies in the face of every American movie that I've ever seen, where if you make an impassioned speech, surely you will win. Um, by, by all the math, I mean, he was excommunicated, he was kicked out of the church, he was outlawed, he was uh, punchable by death, anybody who picked him up. Um, but the thing that he hung on to was not sort of, this is how you play all the cards, right, so that you can have your faith win for you a kingdom in this world, but rather, this right. is the faith that is worth everything. This is the peace for my conscience that would let me stand even if I were to lose all of these other things. When everything was falling apart for Luther, he ran to the scriptures and found more comfort. This is this is where we retreat to. The, the, the idea that Christianity is sort of the ticket to winning all of our battles politically in this world, no. no. But the idea that it would be a comfort for troubled consciences, though, that, that we're about. And that's what it's all about. It's, uh, well, what does it say in Hebrews 9? That through the blood of Christ, eternal redemption is secure. And that's the reality of why Luther did what he did, to make sure, make sure that everyone's eternal redemption is secure. And that's what you learn from the narrative of the church. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be riddled with persecution and affliction and pressure. You're, you're squeezed but not squished. And that's what the history of the church is. And yet your salvation, your redemption is secure because Christ has died for you. And that's what Luther fought for. That, I mean, that's what's worth fighting for. That's the only thing worth fighting for is that reality, because you can fight for everything else under the sun. But if you don't have that, then it's superfluous. Thanks be to God, that's Luther did it for word. us and others did it as well. Amen. Fun times. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. It was a fun time again. I love it. Keep up the good work. The devil hates your guts for it, but Jesus delights in what you do. Love it. We're out. Take it easy. Thanks, man. Hey, take care. <laughs> well done. Fun times, man. That was good. I appreciate it. I kind of dragged my much. jaws there for a while. Sorry. Just kept on going. No, it's perfect. That's, I mean, this is what it is. You, you, have, you got a way of bringing the history to life. And, and this is actually... Uh, where we're going to hopefully make some inroads on this. Like the narratives speak to present day stuff. Right. It's, um, I mean, there's so many things like I almost, I, I'm walking through Eusebius right now with Lonnie. So mm. it's kind of nice to walk through that. And I, I, I told him in Eusebius, he quotes the book of the martyrs. So it's a book that you can find. It's hard to find. But it's like just looking at martyrdoms, that would be kind of neat to start talking through. So I thought of maybe yeah. doing like Polycarp next. That could be that's fun. Good. Do martyrdom with St. Polycarp. You know, that's just a neat little narrative. It's that pre persecution, pre Edict of Milan era. So, but I think it can help people. So it's fun times, yeah, man. I'd love to. You set it up. What was that? I said, yeah, we'll set it up. Fun times, man. All right. Well, if you need anything, give me a jangle. But if not, like I said, keep it up, man. You're doing good stuff. For sure. Love All it. right, All right take care, man. We'll talk to you later. All, All right, bye-bye. Right.